Hey, how's it going everyone? Today, I'm gonna to talk about why do Americans spend so much money? I mean, if you look at Mexico or Thailand, if they want something, they pay cash for it. They don't take out a loan, they don't create 60 payments, they have the money, they pay for it. If they don't have the money, they don't get it. In very rare cases, in these other countries, do you see people taking out big loans? Now, inflation. Inflation drives the spending of fiat currencies. Well, why is that? Because if you know inflation is going to happen, or if you know your dollar's being being debased or your currency is being debased, why not spend it now and get more bang for your buck? Because tomorrow you're only going to get 90, 80, 70, 60 percent or less of your money worth. So it totally makes sense why this inflation drives the spending of fiat. And over the past couple of years, you may ask, well, why have people been spending so much money? They've been spending so much money because they know that tomorrow their dollar is going to be worth less. So because of that, the past couple of years from 2020 to 2024, we've seen neck snapping spending. Absolutely high levels because of all the debasement. And there's other things that cause this too. It's not just inflation. Loose credit conditions is another thing that drives the spending of fiat, because if you can get approved for a very, very big loan for like a remodeling of a kitchen or a pool or a hot tub or a car, whatever it may be, if you can get approved for this, then you're going to spend that money back into the economy. So loose credit conditions, meaning they approve anyone that asks, or just general inflation. These two things really drive the forces of people spending money in the United States, but also in other countries as well. We see this happening uh, in, in a lot of Western countries, but primarily it's in the United States. And why is that? Why are we seeing so much spending in the United States compared to a lot of third world countries? That's because of, in my opinion, this is an opinion, I think over time, we've started to see the erosion of Mer American values. So what is that? That's creating a holiday like Black Friday where you can you know, maybe take the day off, but everything is 25, 50% off. There's people rampaging through the store, Cyber Monday, getting free shipping, 40, 50% off. We've created this culture almost in the United States of consumption, consume now, pay later, buy now, pay later. And this present time consumption at next to no cost is really what's driving a lot of behavior. Now, I'll tell you what also drives people up is that is keeping up with the Joneses. When you see your neighbor get that new car or those nice clothes or taking those nice trips to Greece or to Disney World, you want the same for yourself, right? If you want the same for yourself, what are you going to do to get it? You're going to buy it as well, maybe even try to get a leg up on that person. And it's just this death loop because let's be real here. I, I can afford, you can afford a Bugatti right now if you put five, 10% down, right? Anybody can afford anything if you spread it out far enough. So all of this really does is it, it really is sad because it, it strays from our humbleness of our nature. In America, we're all about consumerism, the Instagram, the flashy thing. We're all about image here. But in reality, we don't have anything. A lot of us have big hat, no cattle. When in the reality of the situation, it's better to have no hat or a tiny hat and big cattle or many cattle. Because that means you can actually do whatever you want when you want without asking anybody. You can quit your job. You can go travel the world for a few years. You can do whatever you want because you're not indebted to anybody. You have the cash or the goods on hand to do whatever you want. So the next thing I've noticed in the past couple of years is revenge spending. Revenge spending is something that you kind of see. I mean, we saw it in 2020, 2021 when they locked everyone up and everyone has all these stimmy checks, PPP loans, excess savings. People had a lot of goods. And what happened is, People consumed. They consumed left and right because they knew that, you know what? I've been locked in the past couple of years. I have all the savings. I missed out. I need to go live it up now. So this locking people up actually in this infinite money printing, it actually made people 
want to make up for lost time. People traveled, they spent, they lived it up. And revenge spending, I won't say it's over yet, but I think it's nearing the final stages right now. I think people, the average consumer is pretty stressed financially. And because the average consumer is stressed financially or they're, they're starting to hit their breaking point based off of, uh, we're seeing about 8 to 9% auto loan and con, um, credit card loan default rates, I think we're starting to see this go away. But w- this is what was kind of leading to Americans spending money was because of that, that emotional, that mental feeling of I've been locked up, I need to spend, spend, spend. And we also see it because of this. And I kind of alluded to it earlier, but if I know, if I buy, let's just say, canned food, right? It lasts four years, three years. If I buy, you know, 100 cans of soup and it's a dollar, and I know in three years that 100 cans of soup will be $3, well, technically, by looking at that time arbitrage, I'm saving several hundred percent by buy now, and the food will still be good then, right? You're seeing this. If you know you're going to get X percent less tomorrow than today, why not buy it today? That drives spending. That's why inflation is so dangerous, especially high inflation. So savings for Americas, they've actually, they actually increased to all-time highs at 32% with the stimmies. And we know now that they're kind of depleted through most of their savings. In fact, This is almost all gone. And I think another thing that contributed to this, and it's it's sad to see because 32% is a a lot for most Americans. But but now I think, you know, we see a lot of these false idols and TV ads, these Instagram kind of influencers, these TikTokers, you name it. And we see them and maybe it's only once in a while. Maybe you go to Whole Foods and you see someone in a nice decked out car But you see these people and you go, hey, why can't I have something nice? I'm going to go buy it. But just because someone else has something doesn't mean you should too. Their circumstances may be different. They may have had a big trust fund or a big inheritance or maybe a windfall from a movie or something. The point is you can't just follow false idols and random celebrities just because they're making a ton of money or just because they have nice things. You know, I'll tell you this, I think a lack of having this low time preference and based behavior, I think this lack of low time preference is one of the saddest things we see nowadays. It's, it's, and this is why I'm a Bitcoiner, guys, and I I know it, I always bring it up, but I, I, I will always bring it up because it's, it's tied deeply to my identity and it's why we're seeing so many problems in society today. And this low time preference I think it's one of the most important things. If you look at the most beautiful music, the most beautiful architecture, the most beautiful b- buildings and, and countries, all of them were made when people had low time preference, when people didn't feel like they had to rush something for that quarterly report. When people are trying to rush things for that quarterly report, for that, that quick and now, that instant hit gamble, That right there is what causes, in my opinion, the downfall of Rome and the downfall of society. We can't delay. We're in a rush to make things better, but we're sacrificing quality. So we always want the nicest car, the best house, and cool vacations. Who doesn't, right? I mean, my vice is vacations. I love traveling the world, right? But guess what? I sacrifice nice cars, a good house. I sacrifice expensive items. I don't have that many expensive items. And I, I invest in my future. And yes, I can take a vacation because I, for, I forego those other several things, right? I don't have a nice car. I don't have a nice house. I just have enough, right? And I think more of us need that mindset. We don't need to do all five of them, right? We all think we're the next hot thing and that maybe we are, but why not live within our means first to prove it? So, Not many of us are willing to sacrifice the older car, a worse house location, and a mediocre travel in the world of Instagram. We We want to chase the next biggest thing, right? And I totally get it. But I urge you to take one of these things, one of these three things, 
and find a way you can downgrade one of them. If you have a $50,000 car, get a $5,000 car. If you have a $700,000 house, get a $300,000 house or an apartment. Or if you have a lot of cool vacations, try to take a, a trip in the country. The point is, try to reduce in one of these areas. And I guarantee you, it'll save you probably five to 10 grand a year or more. At the end of the day, why do Americans spend so much money? Of course, inflation. Of course, the erosion of American values. And of course, the loosening of credit conditions. But sometimes I think it's much deeper than that. Sometimes I think it's because we're not willing to sacrifice and have that low time preference Bitcoiner behavior where we're kind of looking at tomorrow and we're like, no, I'm going to save now because tomorrow that investment will be worth more. We're all looking to get that instant fix, that instant hit. And I'll tell you this, oftentimes we're going to be, we're going to fall short. And that's why it's good to maintain that low time preference behavior. Anyways, guys, I love this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please be sure to like, comment, rate, subscribe, share it around. You guys are the best. Stream, stream those sats, and I'll catch you in the next one.